Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to the third episode of the Disc Swap here at <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Metal Gear Speed. <laughs> right, you please. Compose yourself. I'm what sorry. are you doing? I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as as you may see, uh, we have D Limes thirteen on as our guest this uh, this show. How are you doing today, Limes? I'm doing pretty well. Hey. Oh dear! Awesome. And right, you we already know how you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> I've uh, solved all my problems with alcohol, so we're good shape. <laughs> we're all good now. No more, uh, no more weekly issues. <laughs> sure. I won't be coming on here complaining about computers or coughs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's always something <laughs> with you, man. Yeah, I've just, I've taken the uh, <clears throat> the Irish approach to fixing my problems. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of these days I was gonna come on in a state of advanced refreshment. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it only made sense. Right. So we were hoping to have some good news this this show, but well, any news I suppose is good news. But Metal Gear. Sadly, has no showing at SGDQ this year, and yes. I'm sure most, if not all, of you guys know that. But it it's worth mentioning. Well, aside from plywood is on backup with uh, yeah, what do you call it? Ghost babble. But uh, yeah, they've 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 abandoned us. <laughs> um, we're considering suing. We're not sure yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a yeah. class action, you know, something like that. Yeah, um, let's see. Let's just see how well that one goes. <laughs> the right, I mean, it was kind of on the cards because there'd been a lot of talk about Doctors Without Borders, the only care for depictions of war of any description. Um, so, but it's still, it's a bit of a shame. But I mean, couple that shame with the fact that we did have, you know, three games at AGDQ, so it's not all doom and gloom, I guess. Yeah, I mean... It's, it's sad, but at the same time, we'll 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 bounce back. AGDQ yeah. 2020 is right around the corner. That's our and, year. Uh, and ESA Summer is also coming up. I don't think we have any runs in there, but you know, we 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 we've, we've got showings all over the place. Uh, like uh, Pixels for Peas. We've mentioned that last show coming up at uh, the middle of April, as well as uh, Hackathon actually at the end of April. Ah, oh, heck. Oh, heck. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I mean, and I mean, MGS or has had. A, there's been a couple of marathon runs previous in the last week or two, you know, um, since we last spoke. Because, as you know, aside from this podcast, we don't talk to each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Apache ran at UKSG, which is part of ESA. It's the UK version of ESA. Um, there was Berserker, I believe. Ran uh, a marathon late a while ago. Uh, yeah, Berserker was doing something with the uh, ESA channel as well. <clears throat> and so, uh, I mean, not not to mention Metal Glen Solid yes. hit up MGS one. Uh, not European, but Extreme at a Hoot Fest for Hoot Fest. And uh, that's right, he did. Um, so I mean, who needs GDQ really? I don't. <laughs> I don't need it. Uh, there's there's better marathons. We don't need them, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. It's nice having that that visibility boost from GDQ. But it we, is. But we make do. We make do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it. We can't. We can't all be Mario's, you know. <laughs> we can't all be Zelda, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we won't be there. Uh, I don't think Metal Gear has ever really had XGDQ anyway. It's been. There's only been two. Metal Gear runs that I know of. Tree, maybe. I think Jag, Plywood, uh, and Slade. Jag is only run at AGDQs. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Plywood, Plywood ran at Twin Snakes, and I believe Slade also had an SGDQ appearance. Yeah, so I don't think SGDQ has been Metal Gear folk. And I mean, if you look at the games list, there's not really that many uh, games like Metal Gear. It's a lot of, you know, Mario, Zelda. There's a yeah. little bit, I think there's one or two Resident Evil runs. 
happens. You know, there's not a whole lot of this kind of violent, quote unquote, video games. Because like we say, Doctors Without Borders doesn't care for that kind of stuff. Which is fair. I mean, they deal with it day in and day out. You know, uh, if the charity doesn't want to be doesn't want to be seen alongside it, that's absolutely fine. Uh, arguably, AGDQ is the bigger event, anyway. You know, uh, lately it has been kind of evened out. People are mm. catching on. SGDQ is getting a little bigger. Wait a minute. There's a summer version. <laughs> <laughs> but- so the, the the main the main shock coming out of the SGDQ games list this year is that in prior years SGDQ has kind of been the testing ground for uh, for the GDQ formula and this year it kind of seems like they've fallen back on on the safer bets. You know, yeah, the and, old Mario Zeldas. You know. Yeah, uh, some of the some of the standout ones are probably the uh, the silly block stuff like uh, Trag and. Uh, those sorts of things uh so limes do, uh, any 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 games on the list standing out to you anything you you'd like to watch um not really i mean like we alluded to it is a pretty safe list i, I won't say boring list per se but it is a pretty safe list with your prototypical mario zelda type things um i'll say it a couple games when i played was a when i was a kid ape escape and or kazooie those are fun but other than that i mean Nothing really piques my interest all that much, so yeah, that's and that's that's fair. Limes won't say it, but I will. The list is boring. It's well, it's it's a uh, what's the best? It's classic AGD. It's classic GDQ, isn't it? You know, yeah. It's yeah. it's the meme yeah, list. Yeah. It's basically that list just confirms the meme that people go on about with GD. Oh, it's all Mario. It's all Zelda. You know, it's, uh, you know, and that's. Uh, that's I do actually have stats that someone... I was going to say, somebody had actually done up stats, yeah. so... I, I do actually have a stat list that someone in another Discord that I'm in uh, compiled. And, and the stats are a little shocking. Well, not... Well, actually, no, they're not shocking at all, and that's why it's kind of meh. If but, you're uh, standing up right now, I suggest you sit down before you hear this. <laughs> so... The the main defining feature of this this uh, compiled list is that Nintendo runs comprise sixty nine and a half hours of this upcoming marathon at a ratio of fifty three point eight two percent of the marathon. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like that's wow. that's the meme that you hear about GDQ. Just it's been just put into real life. They're living the meme, that, you know. Yeah, the uh, the next highest is PC runs at thirty two percent and forty one and a half hours. But I'll, let's also be be kind of let's split hairs a little bit here. Some of these PC runs are actually PC ports of other systems games. Yeah, so I like, mean, like um, Insane Trilogy and such. Like, what did you say? That was like sixty percent of that is like Zelda and Mario. That's just ridiculous. You know, that's ridiculous. I mean. The best marathon has a has a nice even split of everything. You know, you want a little bit of everything. And it's all if it's a majority of Zelda and Mario, it's like it gets boring very quick because yeah. here's Zelda a link to the past. Oh wow, that was great. Oh, and here's another Zelda. Well I just watched Zelda watch <laughs> Zelda again. And it's like I, I they're just being safe as you say, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, so here's the thing, right? I wouldn't mind so many Zelda games if the Zelda games themselves were shorter. But as it stands, you've got, what is it? Uh, let me see. Let me pull this up so I don't look like an idiot. Uh, Legend of Zelda. Well, we got, we got The Link to the Past and Super Metroid R- Rando at three hours, which I count that because Link to the Past. Uh, going down the list, going down the list. Uh, Link Between Worlds, 100%, three hours, 15. Uh, Majora's Mask, five hours, 15 minutes. Uh, LOZ one rando at an hour, Minish Cap at two hours, like it's it's a little much. Yeah, but... I mean the thing is, it'll have hundreds of thousands of guaranteed. It won't matter, you know, because people love it. People eat it for breakfast, you know. Yeah. But and uh, there's 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 one 
there's one kind of uh, outlier that we do need to address, and a lot of the MGSR folks have already put in their two cents on this one. But uh, Deltarune. Never heard of it. Deltarune from Toby Fox, Undertale 2.0, uh, first chapter. Now, uh, Plywood has gone on record saying that he's not a fan of this pick. Uh, there's a few others. I think Roy in the chat also said so. Uh, Iridescence has said, like, it's essentially a beta, a prototype of the game. Well, so not, even, not even a prototype. It's the first chapter. And what's the estimate on that? Uh, 30 minutes. So they've and used half an hour for a beta. Pretty much. I mean... Oh, cheaty, cheaty. Come on. And it, I mean, is, it is a bonus game, but you know this is going to get met. It's going to be there. Oh, mega. And, and Plywood says in chat, also Kingdom Hearts 3, which literally just came out two months ago. Yeah. It's like... I mean, I don't want to come across as like I'm just on GDQ because I mean I don't really care for GDQ at all uh, if one of our guys isn't there I'm not watching it end of story you know but uh, it's, it's disappointing even if I'm not like disappointed because we didn't get in but there's just so many other runs that could have been there that weren't just Mario, Zelda, Pokemon beta runs just the same old rubbish that you see every single year. It's like it's like uh, you're just watching the reruns. Like if I wanted to watch Zelda again, I could just pick any GDQ and just watch the bot. Yeah, it's it's like GDQ has a uh, an impressive viewership, which I think could be used to better uh, springboard smaller runs that people don't know about. You know. Um, I mean, a lot of people in John Tyler's run, uh, meaning in our firms, didn't even realize people speed ran Metal Gear games. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of runs that you might hear about. You just don't even realize, oh, people speed run that. And it's, it's a great launch pad to get those communities uh, busy, you know, kind of popping because everyone knows Zelda runs. Everyone knows about Mario runs. These aren't, nobody needs GDQ. And I mean, obviously you want to have a little bit of that anyway, because it is popular. It's what gets the donations. But yeah. there's, I think they're, they have the lucrative position and they're probably the most popular online marathon. Oh, they absolutely are. You and know, in the story. ESA, ESA comes second and they're yeah. miles behind, which is yeah. sad, but yeah. like, it's the truth. You know, and it's like they don't owe speedrunning communities anything, of course. I'm not saying they should be showing us because we're a small community or another small community. Riddick community uh, is very small. Um, there's lots of like, lots of games that I see at other online marathons that uh, I've never heard of before. And just like getting the chance to experience them and find out about them is really nice. And I think. It's too easy to fall back on the uh, on the uh, the old reliables, you know. It yeah. just it waters down the marathon and just makes it not interesting. Like I am zero percent interested in SGDQ twenty nineteen. I am can't be bothered, not watching it. So and I mean, I... that's just me. But I imagine there's thousands of people who've looked at this game list and said, "This is rubbish, dude." You know. Oh well, yeah. I mean, it's all it's all over social media. But another thing that I have seen uh, bandied about is that, like I said earlier, SGDQ tended to be the uh, the testing ground, the, uh, yeah. the the weirder stuff, and that's now being shoved off to like GDQ X kind of events. Yeah, which... and that's that's no good either, you know. I mean, there's you have to take a risk too with these marathons. Like, you can't just have the lesser known GDQ, like the SGDQ, that's not as popular to try out the other stuff. Take a chance. Show it at AGDQ. If it flops, it flops. You, you're big enough that you can have an hour to show a run that people couldn't care less about and still be just fine. You know, still be absolutely fine. 
and it's not going to harm GDQ. It's not like ESA. If ESA show that's not known, that people don't care about, that's bad. Because Actually, ESA aren't that big. That, but that ESA being, are better at showing stuff off. That, that being said, like, like yeah, ESA, ESA does take those chances, even though they're smaller. And I think that's a yeah. lot of the reason why a lot of people are saying that. You know, maybe it bites them on the ass. Well, but, a lot of people are saying to that to them, ESA is the is the better marathon because yeah. not only are they like they're they're less they're less strict on the whole family friendly thing. I mean, they're still aiming for it, of course, but they aren't they aren't going banning yeah. people, right? Uh, <laughs> well, not, you can not be that, a, you can not, be a Nazi. It's fine. We don't mind. Well, not not that GDQ <laughs> has banned people left and right for unreasonable oh, well. unreasonable causes, well, but you know, well. well. Depends on who you ask. But, um, but yeah, like ESA, the games as the ESA is never the same one year to the next. You know, there's always, you don't you don't go to ESA and have, what did you say, like 60% more of the marathon be Mario or yeah. Halo or insert franchise. That's really, you won't go to ESA summer and 60% will be variations of Celeste, you know, because it's the, it's the popular game. It's what the kids want to see. ESA are just kind of like, yeah, we'll we'll kind of take whatever, you know. We like, you know, all right, well, maybe we won't have this here because we had it last year in favor of this thing we haven't heard of before. And that's nice, you know. And I think GDQ, if they keep up this habit of uh, being, the, because it's it's become a bit of a meme, but this Nintendo, should, like uh, someone in the chat, I think it was a platonic guy, GDQ is basically a giant ad for Nintendo, and that's kind of what it's turning into, <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. getting kind of worse every year. But if they keep that kind of stuff up, it's just going to turn people away, and it's going to turn them towards the likes of ESA and uh, smaller, lesser-known marathons like Shots Fired, which is pretty big for uh, online marathons. You know, it's, I'm not, I don't think that's a bad thing, but uh, I think having GDQ having some level of competition is good. Obviously, oh, yeah. a monopoly is never good, but yeah, uh, absolutely, it'd be a shame to find the event die off, you know, because they're they're just taking things too safe. You know, you have to take risks, and sometimes things will blow back in your face, but that happens. And you learn from that for the next event. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think they're just trying to be too safe about everything. You know, years ago GDQ was just kind of whatever. We weren't they weren't as strict? And I mean, obviously, an event of their scope, they have to be. Yes. They have to play it safe to a certain extent, but having sixty percent of a marathon be Nintendo games is just silly. You know, it's just silly. Um, yeah. So <laughs> twenty uh, races ago. <laughs> so I don't. I don't want to hammer on too too much longer about about the about the games list. But let's let's actually take a look at some of the good things. So um, yeah. There are a lot of co-op runs, but one of the ones that I said that I wanted to see two weeks ago did in fact make it in the Borders, Borderlands 2 co-op all quests, which is something I suggest that everyone watches because these three guys, they're hilarious. And they're good at the game, and Borderlands 2 is broken. And Raichu, I know you said you wanted to see Dark Souls. That that made it in. Yeah, I'm not going to watch it just out of spite. now. <laughs> <clears throat> uh let's see what else what else is good we got uh i don't know i don't know about anyone being like super into rts games but command and conquer red alert 3 that made it in uh let's see i mean unfortunately there's not a whole lot to to look at there's nuclear throne it's pretty good ape escape as sarge says Mm -hmm. uh let's see uh prey 17 which has seen a fair share of GDQ appearances is back, but it's all main quests this time, which is uh, pretty much a brand new route. Uh, Zombies ate my neighbors, as Plywood says, absolutely. Uh, Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, I found all the Super Marios and Legends of Zelda. And uh, Tony Hawk's Underground 2 as well. Yes, I mean, there's, like I said, it's not all Doom and Gloom. There are good games, but it's just, there's just too much of the same, you know. Yeah. Too much of the, too much of the safe stuff, which is, which is sad to see. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're probably not going to change that anyway. The only thing that's going to change, 
how that works is uh, if they witness a decline in donations or viewers. That's the that's it. But if they're getting you know consistent, and I mean GDQ are growing every year. Mm. You always hear about it on their Twitter and have you? It's uh, you see, oh, this year we've raised more money than ever, and we've had this many viewers compared to last year, and it's it's working for them because uh, even people who aren't in the speedrun communities, uh, they love Mario. Everyone loves Mario. Everyone loves Zelda. You know, it's something your nan could sit down and watch, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's working for them. Like, it's, you know, a more family-friendly oriented stream. I mean, a lot of the time, the less family-friendly stuff kind of gets put off in a at stupid o'clock in the morning, you know, where no one can see it. Uh, for a long time, like, you know, the horror games were all way, way late at night, you know. I mean, uh, Tyler got really lucky with MGS2. It was on, like, 9 o'clock in the evening in America, which is, like, that's yeah. what you want. You know, you want oh, yeah. that. You get that time slot, dude. That's, ooh. But, uh, I don't know. Hopefully, AGDQ 2020 will be a bit better. Yeah. But uh, I'm fed up talking about it now, so. <laughs> also, uh. One very, very final thing about SGDQ, and then we'll move on. Oh, come on, Python, for God's sake. <laughs> One very, very final thing. Volunteers this year from MGSR. Python is volunteering. Neat. He's a host. I'm hosting. Which is I might amazing. just I might, I might just watch just for that. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I'll send really awkward donations that you have to read. Um. <laughs> oh, please do. But we got uh, Daily May. Who is volunteering? We got Kakusu Sora. Uh, we got myself. I don't think I've heard of anyone else who is volunteering, but we do have some attendees who are who are planning to go. Uh, our boy Roy, our boy Roy, uh, Metal Glenn Solid, our boy Plywood as well, who is in fact, like we said, on backup with uh, Ghost Babble. What's the uh, what's the qualifier for getting a backup run featured? Is it like a donation thing, or if somebody drops out, or that's that's if someone drops out. Um, okay. some of the some of the bigger races have like several layers of backups. Um, oh, okay, so we need to send a few. Uh, I need to send a few briefcases around to people to block out. That's right. <laughs> uh, I got you. I got you. Play well. Don't worry. We'll get you in. But yeah, so there will be an MGSR presence at the event. Uh, sadly, just not on the stage. Yeah. But with that, we're done with all of that. Here. Yeah, yeah. I have it every year. But we're gonna be like, it. To be okay. uh, before we do move on, like again, as a couple of your disappointment with remembering that we've been there the last several years in a row. Um, we've been at GDQ with Plywood and Jag and Tyler and Avi. It's not like it's not like they're just ignoring us year in and year out. You know, Pythonicus for the orb. <laughs> so uh yeah no sgdq 2019 but 2020 is looking good it's in python's hometown i believe it's in close florida enough. close enough. close enough. you know so we'll see what happens next year but anyway move so yeah let's let's move on to the main topic of today and the reason limes uh well one of the reasons the limes is uh, here aside we from the rest of the the power to produce this show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a little behind the scenes uh, information. We're we're a little later today than we have been in the past couple of uh, shows, um, mainly because I was actually working today. Uh, <laughs> I got home, scrambled to put things together, a few things at least. You got to fund that uh, trip, dude. That hosts and and uh, and here we are. And what was originally going to happen was Limes was going to take my spot, and uh, it would have been Limes and Raichu. So that didn't help. Well, I mean, the, no, the thought to... the thought was there. I appreciate it, Limes. Thank you for for, yep. for stepping up and 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 putting yourself forward like that. Oh, and and I, I, that wasn't me degrading Limes. It was just thank God because of the uh, state I'm currently. <laughs> 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 we need at least somebody who's a hundred percent focused. So you two guys, um, yeah, yeah. So obviously. 
it's nice to be able to keep things in order. Sometimes one of us won't be here. That's fine. It's fine. But we're all here now. Yeah, we're all here, and now we get to talk Metal Gear Solid 2. It's, it was about time, though, in fact. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny last last uh last show we had tyler on this week we got we got limes and anyone who's been in mgsr long enough knows right you and i pretty much got our starts in mgs2 as well so i mean this yeah this, i mean <laughs> this show my, is apparently just steeped in mgs2 <laughs> my uh start and end is mgs2 um i've never been able to put it down Although I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I hate the game. Sometimes I love it. I'm not sure how I feel about it right now. But, uh, yeah, Python and I especially, about two years now we've been on MGS2. Longer maybe than longer that. for you. For you, maybe three years. But for me, it's about been about longer two. Than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, because you used to run MGS2. So. I. I I before I realized that speedrunning was even a thing, I was I was trying to speedrun MGS2. Well, I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I used to uh, I used to try and um, what was it? I used to try and uh, beat a tanker on very easy, and like I think my best time was like eleven minutes, and I thought I was the shit dude. Dude, <laughs> as, as as a kid, I can I can I, I can. <laughs> I can absolutely, I can, I can accept that. That's, yeah. that's, that's I maybe mean, we that's all got to start somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so limes, let's, uh, let, let's, let's actually start talking about this. What, what got you into MGS2? I mean, I've been playing it since it's, it came out in 01 as a kid. Um, I took a long break from it. I mean, for five, six years, I play it very sparingly. And it's only in the last six months that I even knew speed running was a thing. And I, I originally started with TTS, the, the Twin Snakes. Uh, did that for a little bit. And then um, there was actually somebody in this Discord, who I won't mention who, who posted a time on Very Easy. And I'm like, huh, well, maybe I can beat that. Was it a so I did. <laughs> What's that? Was it a patch? Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> so I beat that, and then I just I got better and better, and I got record on it at, at one point. It's gone now, and then decided to branch out into other difficulties, and then just I, I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm halfway decent at this. And then lately, I'm just trying to fill out the board and um, put at least one round on the board that's not trash for everything that there is to do with MGS2 because I'm obsessed with it. So, it is my favorite game, and, but yeah, that's a little bit of the history of me. Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of very easy on PC, that's been, that's been quite something. Um, oh my, yeah, Especially is, in the last few months. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so incredibly optimized now, it's, it's, it's very difficult to do. I mean, I'm looking at the, uh, the statistics on M the MGS2. You know, because speedrun.com has world record progression. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Over. As long in. as the site works. <laughs> Only. What? Speedrun.com? No. Huh? But, uh, I mean, for quite a while there, Tyler just held the world record on very easy. And then Mac came along. He put a stop to that very quickly. Um, then it was kind of back and forth with Tyler and Mac for quite a while. Until it was eventually brought down around the uh, the one hundred fours. It was mm -hmm. a It was a sub one hundred five max. May sixteenth. Yeah, he uh, got a one hundred four fifty six. That's right. And then. And Tino was five seconds off of him, and then <laughs> stopped running. And then Limes came along, about six months later, as he said, on December twelfth, and he got the one hundred four fifty four. Two seconds. Uh, now Mac. Couldn't allow that for loving her money. He got a 104.49. Limes came in with a 104.29. Then finally, Tino managed to beat that, but it didn't even get verified <laughs> before Lime <laughs> beat it again. Yeah, so he got, Tino got a 104.44, and then he I got, got word of that, and I got the 29 two hours later. Yeah. 
and uh, then Tyler's held it for the time being uh, with a one hundred three forty eight. So he's gone. Yeah, he's done what? Insane. He's done what? Nobody told what everyone told me was impossible. Even though I I said it, I told you sub one hundred four was possible. Everyone told me I was wrong. And Tyler, God bless him, he did what I was too lazy to do and proved me right. <laughs> I, I I don't want to call you out, right, Chu, but. We didn't say sub 104. We said sub 103. No, you're wrong. Um, so, sub 103 I'm, is possible too, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the main leaderboard page here, and uh, I filtered obsolete runs to be visible. And let me just say, the past year has had, uh, I'm not going to count this, but I'm going to say about 20 runs. Easily. 20 verified runs. Easily. Easily. I mean, MGS2 PC, very easy. Just shot up. Shut up. And I think that's actually a lot of that was to do with Mac because Mac has a very a very dedicated Twitch and uh several of his viewers picked up very easy PC on the back of watching him do it, you know. Um mm-hmm. Tino, Weatherman, uh Pro Sedia, a couple of those guys all picked it up because of Mac, you know, which was which was cool. And I mean uh some of them moved on to other things. Lime started on very easy for a long time. He's moved on to beat Tyler on almost everything. <laughs> uh, Apache has stuck with very easy for a long time. Iridescence was very easy. PC and he moved over to console. Um, funnily enough, I never, I think I'm one of the outliers. I never actually did very easy when I started on GS2 because I just didn't. I think I just went with normal because that's what was popular when I joined MJSR. So, um, I, I, I feel like I should bring this up because now is probably the most valid time I've ever brought it up. But I'm going to bring out the grandpa stories here. Um, a lot of you may have... A lot of, a lot <laughs> Chill, of out. You, Chill out. A lot of you may already have known this. I've, I've said this several times at this point, but uh, back, back when I actually realized that MGSR was a thing, Probably, I think it was 2000, end of 2015, early 2016. Uh, the leaderboards were very, very different to what they are today. So uh, before, there were no uh, game categories, nor were there difficulty categories, subcategories. It was all one page. Uh, HD collection was the, uh, the de facto method for running the game, and it was European Extreme at the top and no one else even came close. So uh, when I started running the game and actually vying for leaderboard positions, uh, I I started on very easy because that was what I was comfortable with, you know, coming from a kid like Raichu. I, I was a kid. I actually had a PS2 without a memory card, and I would try and complete this stupid game in one sitting as quickly as possible just because. Just because. And just Why because. Not? Well, I actually used to do that also, but uh, I, I couldn't have said I speed ran the game. I just tried to uh, do it in one sitting, just because I loved it so much. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, so fast forward about ten years, you know, I'm I'm actually looking at this board, and I say I want to I want my name up there. So I I did a run. I did several runs, in fact, and uh, back then. Slade's HD collection, no loading trick, or no wait, loading trick time. Yes. Was his 132. Yeah. Yeah. His, his 132.55 was the top dog. And uh, I actually and beat that. I actually beat that on very easy. I had, uh, it's probably still up on the boards. Oh, yes. Wait uh, for the story. <laughs> actually, actually, I'm not. Is that yeah, no, yeah, that is that is the run on the boards right now. Seventh place, one twenty six fifty nine. I beat Slade. But here's the thing. Uh back then the moderation team was uh is a little different than it is today. Uh, something like that. And uh my runs kept getting rejected. And I was like, okay, what's what's going on with this? <laughs> and then uh one of the rejection notices finally came back. I and the rules, by the way, hadn't said anything up to this point. But the rules uh, were changed overnight and said difficulty must be normal or higher. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> that was the day I learned how to start learning <laughs> <to be> normal. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
see a bit of MGSR um, is not the same as it used to be. It's it's changed a lot since uh, the days of Kikujori Chan and ERGX and what have you. Where the only way to run the game was new game, usually game over on if discovered European Extreme, big boss. That was it. You didn't you didn't run normal. You didn't run very easy for damn sure. And you didn't even run extreme. You ran European extreme. Big boss. That was the end of it. So uh, I think it kind of caused a bit of a stir. The mods at the time when people were submitting very easy runs to beat Slade. Um, I wasn't even doing it to beat Slade. I just wanted no, but, my name on the board. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it also happened on the MGS1 board with Plywood. He submitted an easy PC run that beat Slade. and. Uh, that caused a bit of a shake-up. <laughs> but uh, there was actually a whole forum thread that you can still read um, with people being quite upset that Very Easy was banned. Um, just for no reason, because, I mean, banning a difficult. It's just stupid, you know what I mean? It's the most ridiculous thing. Just I'm thinking about that today. If somebody submitted a Very Easy run, like, no, that's banned it. Sorry, <laughs> get out. Um, but, yeah, when I joined, it was all normal. People did. It was either Euro Extreme or not. That's what you're. Uh, very easy wasn't a big thing, I guess, on the back of that shenanigans. And uh, I just remember. I remember it was Hikari. It was at the top of the board. <laughs> I think. No, it was Python with a one twenty six. Tyler had a one twenty seven, and then Hikari had a one twenty nine. All on all. With, you two had loading trick. Hikari did not. Um, yeah. And I just and, remember. Um, it, it, it's really worth mentioning here that also Hikari's run was uh, a rank one normal run. Yeah, Doberman. He went full. He went full big boss on normal. But I just remember when I joined and I saw that, that's what I set myself on. I was like, well, one day, one day, I want a sub thirty <laughs> MGS tour, and it almost felt impossible. But Lord, like today, if I don't get sub thirty, I just feel like committing Sudoku because that's just a terrible run. I mean, I do any kind of no reset normal that's halfway decent and it's sub thirty, no loading trick, you know, it's it's just par for the course now. Um But uh back then that was like that was the the long the long sought goal. Um and I mean the board hasn't changed too much between then, you know. It was a lot of when I like I said when I joined it was a lot of Python Tyler back and forth on normal trying to share the uh trying to get the top spot. <laughs> I mean if you look at the obsolete runs with uh the loading trick, you can kind of see it like, you know, Python and Tyler Python and Tyler then Python. And I mean, we went, you went from the 129s, and at the moment, the world record on normal loading trick is a 121, and uh, the no loading trick is a 121. I mean, if you asked us two years ago, is that possible? We just laugh like, like there's no way it's not going to happen, you know. So the the run has changed a lot. The world record has changed hands a lot. Uh, actually, saying that. It stuck with you, Python, for quite a while um, on HTC normal for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. No one was able to do anything about it. Python just took the board. This is mine <laughs> now. Get out. Just get out. <laughs> that, and I believe that was right about the time I started making the tutorial because there was... Uh, I made the tutorial... Uh, a few months before we did the uh, the race tournament for MGS2 normal. Yes, because that's like we say, it was a lot of, hey, we want world record. You know, we want to run normal because that's what that was what was popular. You know, it was it was just the big thing. And I mean, if you look at the progression, um, back on the fifteenth of June, sorry, the first of June, two thousand and fifteen, we're looking at the world record on normal no loading trick. You know, 137. Fast forward to uh, January 2019, 
has been pulled down to a 121. Even about a year ago, on the 27th of January, it was a 123. Before that, it was a 127. Then Hikari on the... Uh, so Hikari held it for three years, almost. He, he, he had a very impressive stretch. Like, yeah. So a lot... Some of that was due to the fact that at the time he had, I think he's using, he was using a, uh, uh, the fastest model PS3. We'll, we'll spare you the details, but he was on the fastest model PS3 and he's also using the Japanese version being a, a Japanese runner. Uh, so that was, that was quite a bit of it because like, even I remarked at the time, he's not, he's not doing things as quickly as he could be even doing Doberman strats. Yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot of carries on I looked at and it's very strange and outdated like there's a lot of stuff he does that's just quite strange not even doberman wise but just in general um but i think he looked at a lot of the euro extreme runs and mimicked his run off of that because at the time there wasn't a whole lot of normal to look at you know uh slade's euro extreme run was usually what people push to watch even if you're not learning euro extreme just watch that anyway um and copy that because that's the best thing to do. You know, that Saiyan has the best strats. That that's it's, just the end of it. <laughs> it's, it's still like to this day, it is still a very, very oh, impressive absolutely. run. Three three years later, we're still pointing at it and say, Look at that. Look, Look at, at yeah. that and strive to be that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like listen, if you can and I'm just looking uh at the loading trick or record progression. So Tyler got a one twenty seven on the first of July. Uh, Python beat that within a week and then you <laughs> held it for about four months before it was beaten uh, then Plywood beat it poor Plywood didn't hold it for a day before Tyler beat it <laughs> and then uh, Tyler kept it for about a year actually yeah a year so he held it for one year before Limes came along um, the bane of Tyler's existence these days I guess Um <laughs> But Fair. if we look at European Extreme uh, with Loden Trick, because the Lone Loden Trick one hasn't been that popular. I mean, the record was held by Edge at a 150 back in 2015. Fast forward to uh, today, uh, on the 28th, 25th of November 2018, and we've pulled that down to a 131.36, which is just ridiculous and i remember when tyler got before a uh, big boss run in a race with forensic nobody could understand how this happened <laughs> <laughs> like even tyler couldn't understand how this happened he was like what is going on dude like, what and he spent a long time trying to beat it and then um i mean if you asked two or three years ago hey could i get a 131 on european extreme no loading trick you just get laughed at you know you'd You'd be laughed at because I mean that's pot. and I mean it's worth mentioning as well. Slade's uh, one thirty two fifty five. That was done on a fat PS three. Yeah, fat PS three, which is slow as ass. <laughs> it is. It is. It is the middle child of the PS three sibling family. Yeah, because I mean you have it in terms of speed, in order of speed, slim, fat, and super slim. Just don't buy a super slim. If you want to speed run the HD collection, no. <laughs> actually, actually, if you're if you're looking to speed run in general, super super slims are are a no go from what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, just don't, just don't do that. Whatever you do. But let's let's bring it let's bring it also look at the uh, the IL boards as well. Uh, for for those who don't know, that's individual level. Uh, Limes has gone on a tear through those as well <laughs> yeah um like platonic guy uh but platonic guy brings it up in chat but I, i've noticed i haven't really remarked on it but i've I've noticed these two going back and forth on uh boss survival with, uh, with raiden and uh just a couple of nights ago limes you want to you want to share the story of a couple of nights ago <laughs> uh two tenths of a second <laughs> i beat him by two tenths of a second well, I mean, well, okay, yeah, there's that, there's that. But, I love but, too. 
I was I was remarking more specifically towards uh, the interaction you and I had. Oh, that <laughs> that with the with the Rays thing, yeah. <laughs> Going back and forth for three hours, two hours, whatever it was, trying to get sub one minute forty second on normal Rays on PC. That was yeah. something. We we sat there for three hours. We were both in the call with each other, <laughs> and we we so if if anyone has seen like the the Twitch rivals speedrunning things, uh, we kind of did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of the same thing as that. We spent three no, hours the real, trying the to real question. The real question: Did any of you use Turbo? Because I'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So. Uh, oh, dude. before, before like a week ago, the, the time, the time I had set as like the baseline and yeah. the one, the one run to kind of justify this even being a board at all was a 151. Oh. Well, right. You, this was before you even, you even got involved. Hey, listen, but I submitted a <laughs> European extreme run on the very minute that board. <laughs> fair, yeah. fair. Okay. Fair. Um, to me then limes took it away from me, like he's done with but, all my other aisles but yep but the moral of the story is that that started at a 151 and as of two nights ago the two oh, times the... on the board the two times on the board are a 138 190 and a 141 810 yeah so we're a 10 millisecond cause... yeah so like three hours of work brought that down 10 seconds <laughs> and for a fight as short as normal race is Ten seconds is a lot. Oh, it is. It's huge. I mean, the boss fight raise is actually one of the fun ILs because mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes into a good ray fight, and it's ten percent execution, ninety percent the raise behaving. <laughs> <laughs> because the rays, more or less, for the most part, are like pretty standard. You know, they did. They're textbook i guess you could say quote unquote but they're, they have their moments they're they have their moments they're manipulable within a certain degree yeah and they they can just decide no i'm not playing ball today so screw you and they're gonna do silly things they're gonna jump on the stage when they shouldn't they if you're playing on your extreme it's happened they'll crush you they'll do yeah. war cannons when they're dead mm. <laughs> and all manner of other horrible things so i mean pulling that down by 10 seconds it's kind of it's basically speedrunning though isn't it like i mean three hours to save 10 seconds i mean it's the name of the game yeah that's speedrunning you know one 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 of the more memorable no moments of the night for me was uh was i i hit a uh, i hit like a 148 which beat Limes is 150. And then like two minutes later, he's like, all right, I got a 140, uh, 146. And I'm like, two <laughs> minutes later, I got a 144. And then, and then after my 144, Limes just kind of started decimating as he does. <laughs> and, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of competition though, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, yeah. It's like yeah. we said, it's like we said on the first, on the first episode of this, of this show, that, that competition is definitely key. Yeah, it's, because I mean, it's, it's cooperative competition. Because if somebody can just kind of come in, get a time, and no one cares to deal to do anything about it, it just sits there, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, to pull away from the rays, and uh, I mean, everyone was expecting me to talk about this eventually. If we go to the tanker board, and uh, explicitly European extreme, because I'm not interested in the rest of them, but we can if you want, I guess. If we look at the board. It was largely dominated by Edge. Um, and I mean, Edge has worked pretty hard over the past, how long now? Since 2016. To bring that time lower and lower. Um, joined shortly after by me, I think about six months ago, I started doing Euro Extreme Tanker Isles. Um, so if you look at the obsolete runs, I mean, Edge has a minute. Uh, 7.55. A 754. Then he had a massively uh, glorious run and he saved 11 seconds and pulled it down to a 743. Um, co consequently, my first posted tank rail was an 807, then a 748, 
745 and then a 740 about two or three days ago now mm-hmm. um where i almost lost my reason entirely <laughs> when i uh saw that on the score screen so i mean like all deserve though yeah it was perfect wasn't it frankly no and i mean i'm not I, I don't even know whether I should keep going or just give up doing tank trials now. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> but um, I just remember all I ever wanted to do, like when I started doing the idols, I was like, one day I'll be edge. One day I'll beat edge. <laughs> and then like, I would like second run. I was actually hilarious because um, I was streaming it, which is, un- it's rare for me to stream anymore because I, I mostly local record and just upload stuff to YouTube. But uh I changed the title. I was like, right, I'm going to do... I couldn't... Uh, well, yeah, because before I decided to do Tank Ride, I was trying to do uh, full game runs. Couldn't get anywhere. Just wasn't happening. It was one of those evenings. You know, We all get them occasionally where it's just not happening for you today. So I changed the title. Going to grind tanker. Um, went off to make a cup of coffee before I started. It was decaf, though, because it was late at night. <laughs> and I was laughing to myself in my kitchen like a crazy person i was like what i'm gonna bloody sit down here to do this for a couple of hours and get it second try that's typical wouldn't it be and i was like laughing like you know what's such a concept not no way would that happen uh first run was a bust because it was a right olga second run was left olga (laughs) really good guarders really good two spot camera 740 and i just i freaked out dude (laughs) I am um, like if you, on the chat replay, I basically just smashed my keyboard. <laughs> I couldn't. I wanted to type stuff like to uh, portray the excitement I felt, but I couldn't use my hands, so I just had to smash the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I didn't have the mic on, and it's probably just as well because. I'd have probably ended up in some sort of YouTube video somewhere. I was just screaming, dude. Like, you know, I was, I had lost my mind. Um, and a lot of that goes into this cooperative um, competition where, like, tanks, mainly in part to Edge, being at the top of the board. Because if I had beaten Edge's time, I probably just would have been that cool. Like, if Edge wasn't there, uh, I mean, I beat Tyler's time with my first run. I might have left it at 8.07. Uh, Tyler came afterwards and he got a 7.51. I might have got a 7.48. Called good enough. You know, but to go from, what's that, 27 seconds off my first run in, a, which was in August last year, about six months later, save 27 seconds. If you told me, like, you're right, you, you're going to save 27 seconds in six months, I'd say, no, not happening. Not a chance. I mean... And a lot of that is Edge and Limes in particular, you know, because he's taken it from me, I've taken it from him, back and forth and back and forth. Um, I don't much care for running full game anymore. I mainly just do ILs. But, uh, you know, Limes pulling them off me and then me ripping them back off him. And that lovely back and forth that we have is, is very nice because it just, it keeps me busy and it keeps, me pushing it lower and he's pushing it lower it's like you say with the rays you know you sit there for three hours trying to save a second or two <laughs> and it just That's feels fine. go ahead no i just it's like you know it feels really nice when you do because uh it's like sure i've spent three hours and i've only saved the second but damn it i saved the second you know i yeah. did that because i worked hard mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah, and funny enough, with doing those raids with Python the other night, I actually learned some things that translated over to European Extreme Rays, and now I do that a little differently and do it faster because of it. So not only did we have fun doing it, I learned some things. Yeah, I mean, it's like... You never like, know what you're going to learn. No, and it's when you get into these like races and stuff with each other and you get into this competition, it just helps you push it lower and lower and lower. I mean... um. The other IL that I run a lot is kind of to a bit of a meme me talking about it, the snake tails. Um what a wrong doing on console. Like I remember when I got a four twenty nine 
I was like, I was like, this is it. Can't go faster than that. No way. Um, <laughs> and I think it was a day or two after I got the uh, tanker time. I was like, ah, I might just do some wrongdoing for the fun of it. First run, 426. I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I'm after spending, I spent hours trying to get a 429 and now I have 426 just like that, you know. No problem. I mean, um, here, okay, so on the subject, really quickly, of uh, Snake Tail's console, let me tell you a story about two people who, who drove competition to the highest point. One name we've, we've mentioned here pretty often, Stealth Edge. Stealth Edge. And the other, Rick's Q, uh, used to be a lot more prevalent around, around the scene, but he's kind of dropped off into the background. Still around, yeah. he's still here. But uh, Dead Man Whispers is, is lit, dude. Yeah, does, does, <laughs> because of those two guys. Doesn't do much running anymore. But these two, they went absolutely bonkers over, over Snake Tail D. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just looking at it here, and it's, it's ridiculous. It's actually funny, because if you look at Edge's, there's a 754, and we're at 720 now. With sub 720 on the horizon, it is possible. I've been trying to get it. Um, the closest I've got so far is a 7.22. Damn it. Um, but I remember <clears throat> I was looking through the submissions and uh, after Drix posts a 7.50, so he beat Edge by four seconds, um, Edge's next submission is a 7.53 and he's like, thank you, Drix, for giving me competition for this thing, <laughs> <laughs> Um Then Edge pulled it down to 7.31. Drix was the first with a sub 7.30. Um, and he was also the first with a sub 725 so it's been a battle with those two guys for sub 720 uh, on Edge's 720 submission he was actually really really close but he uh, fell on the stairs on the way to Vamp and that killed it I mean, if he hadn't fallen we'd be looking at Edge with a 719 guaranteed um, like all last night I spent about two hours trying to get seven, seven nineteen, but uh, it was not to be. But no, it's yeah. like it's like you say, you know, with this back and forth competition. I mean, they took it from just under eight minutes to under seven and a half minutes. It's crazy. Yeah, when you think those, about it. You know, those two have eleven submitted runs within a, a few months span. Yeah, and I mean, nobody gives me this competition on the other one. Just like, Limes is afraid to. <laughs> oh, no, I, no, I, I <clears throat> suck at him, and I have acknowledged that. The only one I'm good at is Snake Tails E. Like I was hoping Limes would, as he's crazy, but no one, no one will give me competition for the rest of them. Um, Platonic guy did, but Platonic guy uses G code, so it doesn't count. Um, <laughs> goddamn Android platform, damn it! <laughs> <clears throat> but uh. Yeah, like, the MGS2 boards, the history of, like, some of these runs is just ridiculous, you know? It's, when you get the story behind some of them, and you just... Because it's funny, because you see on the surface, uh, you might see only three or four runs, you know? I mean, if you just look at Dead Man Whispers, there's six runs on the board. But it's... When you go into the filters and you click the obsolete runs, that's when you see the full of uh, what's gone into getting those times with Drake's having a 723, my having a 722, and Edge having a 720. It's a, uh, it's like, it's quite crazy, as you say, you know, within a space of a few months, they pulled off in 40 seconds off a, off a seven minute run, pretty much, you know? Yeah. It's, it's but, not uh, an insignificant shave. No, it's not. No. I mean, like trying to get a sub 720, is going to be the bane of my existence, frankly, <laughs> <laughs> because it's not easy. I mean, I'm down into trying to save three seconds. Three seconds is a lot when you're talking seven twenty something. That's a lot to try and shave off a run. You know, your menu has to be really, has to be, really. and it's kind of it's funny and a bit sad at the same time for the casual on onlooker. Um, they just see a run that ends with a score screen that says seven, 
XX. But uh, you know yourself the work you had to put in and how good you had to play and how you had you had to do. You had to move precisely. You had to menu fast. You had to do the bosses really well. It's like, and the little time losses that you might see, most people wouldn't even realize are there, you know. Um, so they might just look at you and they're like, why are you? Why are you resetting? What's wrong? How come you didn't get it? I don't understand. That run looked fine, but it's like, it looked fine, but this run, that run. I love speedrun a bit. You know I hate it. <laughs> so, I think, go ahead. I was going to say, I think another category that's worth mentioning, one runner really, <clears throat> is Droogie. And the fact that he's crazy with his uh, 100% dog tag run on Extreme which was uh, the first of its kind, I believe. Yeah. I don't think anyone else did a big boss all dog tag run. I mean, he did it on PS2 in less than two hours and 20 minutes. Um, and I know he was very disappointed that more people didn't pick it up because it wasn't Euro Extreme. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's sad. It's kind of tucked away in the miss category. Droogie's run is just insane as well. Um, the boards have never been better in my opinion you know with yourself Tyler uh, D Limes um, Edge whenever he comes back yeah we've 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 said it on and off here the last couple of weeks but MGS2 is generally the hottest of the uh, of the series speedruns and like for 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 guys like us, we've collectively we've probably played this game over fifty years by now, <laughs> in in total. But like it, for us, for us, it's like an easy sell. It's like yeah, MGS two is freaking fantastic, and yeah. like for for others, I I think MGS two is probably the easiest of the uh, of the more difficult runs to follow. If you if if that makes any sense, it's like like you say, uh, a, a spectator probably doesn't know a lot of the things that are going on inside your head at any any given moment, but yeah, like they can still follow along fairly decently. Yeah, like high level MGS two runs, um, you just you can't stop thinking. You know, you're always thinking about the next, the next room and the next thing that you have to do. You know, it's like playing chess, um. Which sounds silly, I'm sure, but it's like when you get to a certain level and you're trying to save mere seconds off of a room or a segment or a, or a run, it's like it gets a bit crazy in your brain because you're trying to you're trying to do a hundred things at once. <laughs> and it's also that there's a level of like crushing disappointment when something goes wrong, but that's superseded when it goes right with overwhelming joy and happiness i mean and like and and even though you might get disappointed when something does inevitably go wrong like some some of the top guys limes raichu tyler i i, 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 uh, I guess me um <laughs> i mean i guess you did motherfucker you're at like top of most of the boards dude come on, come eh, on. i've had my it? i've had my time but ah, uh, you'll be back. You're all, they always come back. So, I've I've said it in a lot of the MGS2 runs I commentate. But improv, improv, improv. When something inevitably goes wrong, you gotta know your backups, and that is one of the most impressive things about MGS2 to me. Watching runs is yeah, seeing I mean... how will they handle this situation. Limes, couple <laughs> like last month, last <laughs> month. I know where this is going. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you probably there. do. That race was incredible because both of you made some relatively big mistakes. But both of you, both of you, had your heads on straight and, and made it out 14 seconds the, between the two of you. And I mean, That's nuts. Like, one of the big things about racing in GS2 is uh, when you go to race someone in and I guess most speed games, I don't know many speed games aside from, like I know MGS2, I guess. 
you can't just look at them and say, right, so Raichu is going to race, race lines, or Python is going to race Raichu. Python has a faster time than Raichu. Python's going to win. Because it doesn't come down to that. It comes down to how well you know the game. How experienced are you? How long have you been doing this? Because experience wins races than uh, having the fastest time on the course. Because it's that experience that helps you to fix a botched execution. If something goes wrong, experience helps you rectify the situation because you have to do it fast, you know? Um, it's unfortunate that I, I always kind of look at my race with plywood in the turn when I fell and uh, ended up getting killed in the end. That shortly afterwards, I figured out that there was a ration there. I know that ration's there now. I'll never forget that ration's there. So if I ever end up in that situation again, I have my back up in the back of my mind. Uh-oh, I've fallen off. In alert mode. I won't die, I have a ration. So it's those little things that, that can win you races. Because, and, all sort, and not just races, but can get you at the top. All sorts of other But uh, that race with Lions and Tyler was something I can tell you. So we've, we've, we've spoken a lot of words about MGS2 just now. So, uh, Limes, I know, I know you've dabbled a little bit here and there in MGS1, but uh, any other games in the series you're looking at? Um, well, yeah, MGS1 is probably... I'm probably going to go back to Twin Snakes here at some point um, after I'm done with MGS2 stuff, MGS1. I do want to do 3 at some point, but I don't have any idea yes, when. Three is the best game ever made. Yeah. <laughs> and then beyond that, I'm I haven't gotten too far ahead of myself, so fair enough. Yeah, we uh <laughs> we've we've got a couple of of people who who are becoming more series runners over single game runners. I I shamelessly count myself among that. Um Jaguar King as well. Mm -hmm. runs several of the games is that is that something you're maybe looking at in i don't know some point in the future i wouldn't be opposed to it i mean if i nail those other ones i mean i still have to complete all of them i mean i haven't i haven't completed four fully i haven't even touched five or or anything else so <clears throat> i'm open to the idea and i'm open to the idea of doing the 2d stuff too so yeah yeah. The 2D ones, <laughs> as, as a quick aside, are difficult. Very, mm -hmm. very, very difficult. I don't know how some of these guys do, you know, running pretty much all of the games. Because I just couldn't. Honestly, I just don't think I could, you know. Um, it's hard enough trying to balance MGS2. But then try and couple that with 10 other games. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of why that's kind of why I'm not doing all of them at once I'm like doing yeah. everything I want to do the here, this, and then move on to something else yeah, because I mean when you look at the likes of Jag, Plywood even um, Plywood probably more than even Jag because I mean not only has Plywood run his fair share of Metal Gear games he's also run a ton of other games you know, Silent Hill uh, Parasite Eve Rugrats. Steel Battalion, Rugrats, uh, Guitaru Man, um, and all. Yeah. Life is Strange, <laughs> all sorts of. He's got quite the repertoire. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I don't know how you can do it. I was like, how can I do this, dude? Because I just, I couldn't, you know? I, I, I can't do What? <laughs> so, um, yeah, for me personally, I, I'll probably stick with one or two. Dabble here and there, and other ones, but I just I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do what you and you do Python with MGS two, MGS one, MGS four, MGS three, Portable Ops, Peace Walker. You know, I just I'd be all over the place, dude, all over the place. I'd be doing MGS two strats and 
things aren't going right for me, you know. I mean, it wasn't too long ago when I was, uh, when I was trying to de-rust MJS2. You heard of Extreme, I was um, failing Strut D because I was forgetting to freeze the first bomb as you come in. Like, why was I doing that? <laughs> I was like, I couldn't understand what was wrong. Turned, because I'd been playing too much MJS3, I'd be like, oh, God damn it, Reggie, you do this. Um, but yeah, I, oh, God. It just hurts my head thinking about it, dude. Hurts my head just thinking about it. But everybody should run MGS3, just saying. <laughs> I know we've been talking a lot about MGS2. But no, 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 no. Everyone needs to run portable ops. Yeah, but MGS3 is like a better portable ops, dude. No, 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 no. No, come right, on. Now. Right, right this minute. No, run portable now. ops. Just fill the boards. Fill the boards with whatever time you get. I don't even care. Just listen now. All just, right. just, just run him. Just, just run portable ops. You just listen to me now when I'm talking to. You. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to fall out with you here, Python. But I will. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, like Python was saying, run MJS three. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Um. I'm not even going to address that comment. Um. <laughs> that platonic I'm going to give you I'm just going to say please don't do that because it's, it just gets people upset it doesn't get anything done <laughs> the MGS3 boards don't get I know a lot of people complain about the MGS3 and look I've said it now I have to talk about it people complain about the MGS3 boards not being separated by difficulty the reason for that and I think it's I'll say it now while there's people listening just to clear this up is because there is not enough runs to justify it what we'll end up with is a ton of empty subcategories. That's the reason it hasn't been done. I mean, okay, a, a counter argument. I was actually while we were while we were talking about MGS two and and the forum posts leading up to that category swap. The same the same comment was made actually. The same the same the very same argument about how if they separate the leaderboards, there will be no runs on some of these leaderboards. And, and, and look at what MGS2 is now. I mean, I'm not going to say the exact same thing is going to happen, but it's more than a possibility, seeing as now we've got a track record with that sort of thing. I guess, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not going to happen by annoying Mini, you know? Um, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> Which people seem to love to do is just annoy Mini and ask him constantly to do it. It's not going to happen that way. Um, what we need is if you want to see it, and Mini said this before, and I think he's fair in saying it, if you want to see it, do the runs. Do the runs on other difficulties, and then there won't be a ton of empty categories. Run normal. We routed normal for you people. Please, run normal. <laughs> the, oh, and I, I can vouch for this, actually. The normal route is tricky it's 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 definitely tricky but it's not it's not also terribly difficult it's a oh, very nice middle ground whereas european extreme can be nightmarish just at times yeah just, just normal yeah i mean do an mgs too run very easy for do something <laughs> but just it's just not going to happen <clears throat> and i find a lot of people ask for this I've never any intention of running the game anyway. Um, the thing about it is, I'd love if the boards were split. I would. But I can understand why it hasn't been done. And I think they were split at one point and then merged back together because uh, nobody was actually running anything extreme. MGS3 is just not popular. It's unfortunate. It's, it's just how it is, I guess. Uh... It's a little different to MGS2. I know MGS2 is in the same situation. MGS2 is and was always quite popular. Um, yeah. If you merged all the runs together, it would just be a mess, dude. It would just be a disaster. <laughs> you know, um, MGS3 is just one of those games. I love it, but they don't love to speedrun it because it is a hard game to learn, you know. I found it a nuisance to learn. Even still, I find it in use. I mean, you saw that race with Python. That was a... And that's after like six months <laughs> of learning the game. Um, just run MGS3, please. 
Just somebody, anybody. Vacuity, run MJS3, please. <laughs> Panic guy, please. Python, please. <laughs> well, Python is learning. Yeah, he's ran. He's done his bit. Python's done his bit. What about the rest of you? <laughs> huh? Sitting there. Oh, split the boards, Mr. Ambassador. Well, learn to run the damn game first. <laughs> really, what you y'all need to do is just petition me, make me a model so I can. <laughs> <clears throat> That's how we get it done. Um, because as we've seen with the MGS2 boards, when I'm a mod, things get done. Because uh, I cleared up, I cleaned up them ILs by, made it look lovely. So it wasn't too long ago the IL board from just was. I fixed it. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, write your local mini and ask them to make write you a mod on the MGS3 board. <laughs> <laughs> write them an email. All right, so we we we've we've gone on a fair fair bit. Uh, Limes, you got any uh, parting words? Any words of wisdom? Anything you'd like to say? Oh, uh, no, not really, to be honest. <laughs> well, fair enough. Yeah, nice and simple. Right, you? I think I think your 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 spiel there pretty much sums it up for you, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not gonna say I'll ban you from MGS or history, but I will. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, I, I, this is this is the hill I'll perish on, frankly. Um, but I mean, you know, we love you, people. You're great. You know, mm-hmm. you don't actually have to learn MGS3. I won't make you. Um, that's what I pay people for. Um, you know, just learn one of the games. If you don't learn, if you're not running the games, now's the time. You know, there's so much, there's so much resources. It's it's become easier than ever. To learn a Metal Gear game, what with the wiki and uh, uh, lately MGSR has we've redone the tag system, the role system. So uh, if you click on some people's names, you'll notice that they're a helper for a certain game, which basically means they're knowledgeable and they're patient to help people learn. I mean, Python has a great MGS2. North. Apache's working on one for very easy for MGS2. Um, I was doing the Euro Extreme on. I got bored and did other things. <laughs> There's oh. all sorts of videos for MGS3 on. Uh, if you want to learn Euro Extreme, if you want to be a big boy, Foxy made a tutorial a long time ago that's still very much viable today. Plywood is working on a MGS1 any percent, a really in-depth tutorial. Yeah. Uh, he's I'm... made some crazy stuff for Ghost Babble. There is no better time to learn a Metal Gear game. Oh, and 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 just by the by, I I am currently working on translating the uh, the big book of notes for Portable Ops into a, an easy to digest uh, tutorial. So, run Portable Ops. Everyone should run it. Everyone should just run just run a Metal Gear game. Damn it. Um. Oh, and Sergeant Silent actually made a really cool guide for MGS4. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's 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 basically it, you know. If you aren't already, go ahead, please join the Discord. We have uh, we have that command there for the Twitch chat. Sorry to those in uh, YouTube or etc. Land, but links will be posted there. I'm I'm pretty sure. But we got the Discord. We've got our website, MetalGearSpeedRunners.com, which uh, our wiki is conveniently tied to. There's a nice handy link on the front page. Uh, we've yeah, got a... we've got also our Twitter at MG Speedrunners. So follow, yeah, the bookmark, like subscribe, just, just do it. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Just run the damn game. Everybody should run. The... I mean, like I say, it's no joke that like. It has gotten, it has never been this easy to learn, honestly, because there's so many knowledgeable people who've, and I think it's worth shouting these guys out because, you know, uh, you, Python, uh, Plywood, myself, Tyler, Apache, a ton of the guys have spent so much time and effort into the wiki. It's just unbelievable. You know, it's, 
it's it's really turning in and shaping up to be one of the nicest. Because I, I like at one time, resources were in Discord pins, or some person's YouTube channel somewhere, you know. So to have it all in one central location just makes life much much easier. Uh, it's it's great for everybody because it helps us. Somebody comes in and they want to learn something. It's like, well, you go and you read that wiki that I spent far too long doing for you. Damn it! Um, you don't have to worry about the nasty guide section on speedrun, which is just uh, <laughs> Python's working on guides, Apache's working on guides, Plywood's working on guides. I will eventually go back to <laughs> the Euro Extreme one, but uh. Please just learn the games, please, please do it. You don't have you don't have to scour YouTube anymore. I made it easier, damn it. Yeah, do it. Learn Zelda. Zelda's bad. <laughs> I'm gonna anger a lot of people by saying that, dude. Dear. <laughs> so just... I believe I believe that'll about do it for us today on the disc swap. Thank you as always for for coming out. Uh, for the follow the channel. Audience. Follow the channel. <laughs> For those of you in the live audience, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Uh, for those of you listening uh, on YouTube or your uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, yeah, I haven't heard back about the iTunes. It will be on iTunes as soon as Apple gets their shit together. That yeah. could take a while because it is Apple after all. Um, yes, sometime next September it should be on iTunes. <laughs> but, but yeah. <clears throat> thank you guys for 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 checking us out and hanging out and listening to us prattle on about some some incredibly anime stealth game from 1980. Thank you for listening to us chat this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you in a fortnight. Well, yep, the disc swap. We'll see you in a, in in a couple of weeks. The channel we will probably be live next week with something. Stay tuned for news on that at some yeah, point it's, it's uh, a big in the secret. Discord. It's a big secret. But join the Discord, dude. Join the Discord. You're welcome. You're welcome, Vicuity. Thank you for being a listener. Thank you for using your ears to absorb this information. For a lie down. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, good, good afternoon, good evening, good night, everyone. Peace.